Good morning, Bethany. Welcome to this Pentecost Sunday as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit and the birthday of the church. Come, let us worship together this morning. 使徒行传第二章第一节到第四节。In toda la casa donde estaban reunidos. Und als der Tag der Pfingsten sich erfüllte, waren sie alle einmütig beisammen. De langa semblable a de langa de feu. Kamarojo a de vlogeria kutamka. Genele ilmus nagu lohestunut tulikeeli. Ish megjelentek előttük kettős tüzes nyelvek. Asentándose sobre cada uno de ellos. Batanuach achas achas al kol echad mehem. De pushovi siparatura. Asentándose sobre cada uno de ellos. Qui posé grain par grain sous tête Yoshak. Según el Espíritu, les concedía expresarse. Athos to pnevma e vidu aftis apothegiste. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak other tongues as the Spirit and the Yo pran pale lot lang. Dapre Jean, l'esprit bon dia ta fe o pale. Merci en pile. Join me in worship as we sing Spirit Song. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks that we can come to this place on this day, this special Pentecost Sunday, a time in which we celebrate the birthday of the church, a time in which we celebrate you coming down on the disciples like fire, like tongues that touched each and every one of them, giving them the ability to speak in, in languages that were even unknown to them, giving them the ability to, to, to communicate so that people could hear the good news of Christ, to hear your message. So Lord, as we come and gather to this place today, may, may people hear you in the way they need to hear you. May they feel your presence and power. So Lord Jesus, come and, and work amongst your people this day. Lord, it's a privilege to be the church, even in these difficult days, maybe even especially in these difficult days, a time in which we can share the good news with others around us, with family and with friends, as we communicate to them through Zoom and through phone calls and through just hollering across the street. So even in the midst of isolation, we are not alone. So Lord Jesus, come and, and work amongst us. Come and meet with us and, and help us to become the church that you would have us to become. For Lord, we confess that we are all sinners in need of grace. So come, Lord, and cleanse us of our, our sinful ways. Come, Lord, and do your work in our midst. Help us to be the disciples you've created us to be and, and called us to be and even showed us how to be on this day of Pentecost. So Lord, empower us and we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord, as we gather in this place today, we're ever mindful of those in our church family and those in our community and even in our country and around the world who need your special grace and your healing during this time. We pray, O oh Lord, for a healing of this COVID virus. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are suffering from surgeries and other procedures, even in the midst of these difficult times. Lord, we pray that you as the great physician will reach out and to touch them, that they might feel your presence. So draw close to us all on this day and be with us as we continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. For we pray all these things in the precious and holy name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, Autumn. Hey, this looks so good. You might notice I have a package here. I see we're having a party. Yeah. Is it someone's birthday? Well, in a way it is. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, what are some things you enjoy doing at a party? Well, you have to sing happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, eat cake, of course. Oh, yeah, we got some. And play games. Yeah, those are all great things. Well, today we're going to hear about the church's birthday. Doesn't that sound oh, exciting? Okay. Do you remember how we talked about how Jesus promised to send the disciples a special present that would help them share the news of the gospel? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Well, the disciples were waiting for this present, and they were hanging out in a room, in Jerusalem and there were actually a lot of people in town at the time because they were having a special celebration called the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Tabernacles. That's right. That was an important time that all the Jewish people had to honor and they would come to Jerusalem and to celebrate. So there were people from all over the place and they were disciples there patiently waiting. Then all of a sudden there was a big sound like a mighty rushing wind. And then there were little bits of fire that appeared. This special fire didn't burn up their hair or catch their clothes on fire, but it showed that God's Spirit was present. Here was the Holy Spirit. It finally come. Now, the Holy Spirit is sort of a special go-between. You know, it's the Spirit that makes 
all things possible. You know, sometimes we don't know what to say or how to pray. Well, the Holy Spirit comes in to help. And the Holy Spirit comes to these disciples and appeared as flames above their heads. Wow. And then another amazing thing happened. The disciples started speaking in other languages. There were people in Jerusalem that spoke a lot of different languages, but the disciples didn't have translators with them. Yet they were able to talk automatically in other languages. Oh, wow. And they started eagerly sharing the story of Jesus. Wow. Some people criticized them, but Peter assured them that everyone there was not drunk or crazy. <laughs> they were just full of God's love. Yeah. And with that, they all continued talking about what the story of Jesus was and sharing the amazing things he had done. And you know, a lot of people even came to believe. And after that, the disciples started meeting regularly. They shared everything with one another and continued meeting and sharing and caring with one another. So at Pentecost, and that's what we're talking about today, is Pentecost, we get to celebrate the birthday of the church. It was the start of an amazing way that God allows us to serve and love each other. And that is the true exciting thing. Once we are on fire, and we receive the light of Jesus, we can take that to other people and light up their lives as well. God wants us to share his story and his love with the whole world. It only takes a spark to get others going. So let's celebrate <laughs> and let's share with one another. I love that idea. Yes. So boys and girls, we're all gonna to pray together like we do when we're together here at the church. So let us pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for the word in the Bible. Thank you for the word in the Bible. Thank you for your church. Thank you for your church. I'm glad I'm part of your family. I'm glad I'm part of your family. Help me to share your love. Help me to share your love. And tell others about Jesus. And tell others about Jesus. I love you, God. I love you, God. Thanks for loving me. Thanks for loving me. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See ya. Bethany, I want to take this moment to, to thank you for your support of the church during this time. We invite you to continue to give through mailing in your, church, your checks to the church or through your online bill page, your local bank or by going to our website, www.bethanyumc.net, and click Donate in the upper right corner and follow the links there. Again, thank you for your support of our local church during this time.
to join me in the reading of today's scripture, found in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they ask, Are not all these who are speaking Galilean? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jeff Foxworthy used to say, you might be a redneck if your mother has ever been asked to leave a bingo game because of her language. Or maybe you might be a redneck if you ever hit a jukebox with the pool cue. Or you might be a redneck if you come back from the dump with more than you took. Or maybe you're a redneck if you know exactly how many bales of hay your car will hold. You might be a redneck, says Foxworthy if your dad walks you to school and it's because you're in the same class. I, I don't know if it's acceptable to make fun of rednecks these days, but maybe it's because rednecks make fun of themselves that we feel it's appropriate. I mean, one of the longest running comedy shows was that of Hee Haw. And who doesn't love Mayberry RFD or Andy Griffith? What a wonderful show, Andy and Barney. You know, why would I be talking about rednecks on Pentecost Sunday? Well, maybe it's because Galileans were the cultural equivalent in Jesus' day of rednecks. I mean, you could always tell a Galilean by his or her accent. I mean, scholars tell us that Galileans had difficulty pronouncing gutturals and had the habit of swallowing their syllables when speaking. I mean, they would say running instead of running, or hunting instead of hunting. Or they might say far when they meant fire. I mean, the wise men came from afar, this the old joke says. So Galileans were, were looked down upon as being somewhat providential or backwards, maybe even a little slow. When Peter, a Galilean, was in the courtyard, being, while well, Jesus was being interrogated by Pilate, that's why a servant girl knew Peter had been one of Jesus' disciples. Why? Because of his accent. His Galilean accent gave him away. Now, knowing what we do about a Galilean accent, put yourself in Jerusalem on this Pentecost day. Here are Galileans. Suddenly, they're elegant, able to speak fluently in foreign languages. They're speaking in the equivalent of German and French and Arabic and Ethiopian and speaking so fluently that the people who hear them, people from all over the known world, understand them perfectly in their own language. Can you imagine Jed Clampett 
of the Beverly Hillbillies fame suddenly bursting forth in fluent Greek? Or can you imagine Gomer Pyle speaking fluent German? Or he hauls junior samples, bonjour, monsieur, as if French were his native tongue. If you can imagine that a, a group of people with limited or no education could suddenly speak exotic languages, then you can imagine Jerusalem on that first Pentecost. No wonder the crowds who heard them speaking were stunned. No wonder this impact, this event had such an impact on society. No wonder when Peter, a Galilean, stood up to speak, thousands were converted. This was a dramatic, this was extraordinary, this was unbelievable. These folks suddenly became remarkable communicators, articulate ambassadors, sophisticated sentinels. This brings us to, to something that we need to see about Pentecost. First of all, Pentecost is a day of unity and respect for all peoples. It's interesting to note the contrast between this story and the Old Testament story about the Tower of Babel. You remember that Old, Old Testament story when humankind decided to build a great tower all the way to the heavens to make a name for themselves, but God instead confused their speech so that they couldn't communicate with one another and destroyed the tower and scattered the people. Now contrast that with the, the scene of Pentecost. Here again, people are, are gathered together in a large group from all over the known world, and already they spoke different languages. Yet suddenly, already separated by their native tongue, suddenly these Galileans start speaking, and everybody could understand in their own native tongue. The Tower of Babel represents human beings' alienation from one another, but Pentecost represents humanity coming back together in Jesus Christ. That which had been torn asunder came back under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You know, there's all kinds of people from every socioeconomic group lying in cemeteries side by side. I mean, people from lower economic levels are often the first that are sent to fight in war. There are also many young African Americans lying in cemeteries, Hispanics, Native Americans, you name it. In cemeteries, we are all equal. In a day in which our country is so divided, we need to be reminded that we are called not to divide, but we are called to unite. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote these words, There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Shame on people in today's society trying to divide us. Shame on people who treat others with disrespect. Pentecost is a day of unity and respect for all of God's people. Here's something else we can see. Pentecost is from God. Pentecost is not a man-made device. It's a gift from on high. The crowd in Jerusalem understood that. When they heard the disciples preach, they knew something extraordinary was occurring. Men from such differing backgrounds do not suddenly obtain such amazing rhetoric abilities, not under normal circumstances. Something dramatic happened on that day. Something from God. We need a consciousness today that, that God is at work in our midst. Even more important, we need to know that God's work is available to us and in us and through us. If God can use humble Galileans, He can use all of us, no matter who we are. Tracy Bailey is a young man who discovered that God's power is still at work in the world. It came after Tracy had broken his parents' heart. 
shocked his disbelieving community. I mean, the city citizens of, of Goshen, Indiana, were stunned to learn that Tracy Bailey, captain of the wrestling team, member of the student council, good student, from the church-going family, that he, Tracy, he had been one of the ones who had vandalized the local high school. Tracy, you see, had fallen into an unruly group who used alcohol to fuel their petty vandalism and thefts. But one night, the boys, in a drunken frenzy, broke into the high school and, and tore apart classrooms. Now the judge wanted to hold him up as an example to others who might get involved in, in similar type of situations. Tracy was sentenced to a five-year term in juvenile offenders facility. Originally, Juvenile Hall was, was that of a, a, a lesser type place where teens could, could be taught and, and remolded. But this facility now held hardened criminals. Facility held murderers and, and, and rapists. It would not be a simple slap on the wrist. In prison, Tracy was determined not to bend an inch. He would be tough. He would never admit defeat, no matter how much he was hurting. But during a stint, he found himself in solitary confinement. And one day he looked in the mirror. He didn't look like himself. He didn't just look hardened, he looked deadened. When he looked deep inside, all that hardness and deadness melted away. Tears began to flow down his, his face. He prayed to God. He, he admitted that he couldn't rely on his own reserves anymore. Tracy doesn't know how long he prayed, but he knows that a guard came along and prayed with him. He knows that somebody gave him a Gideon Bible. Soon he found himself joining the prison Bible study when he was released a few years later, earlier than he should have, he worked a few months to pay off his debts and to repay the school for his vandalism. When he entered college, after he finished his, his degree, he began studying an education degree in science and math. He decided that he would pay back society for becoming a a good role model for other confused young people. He decided to become a teacher. I guess you could say he reached his goal. For in April of 1993, Tracy Bailey attended a special ceremony in the White House where the President awarded him the highest honor of Teacher, National Teacher of the Year. So here we have a group of Galileans speaking in foreign languages fluently. A young man in prison studies the Bible, later becomes National Teacher of the Year. Does such a thing really happen in our world? Yes, they do. You see, God is alive and God is at work in this world, regardless of who we are and what we have done. The door is open always for new beginnings. Pentecost is a celebration of the unity in Christ. Pentecost is a celebration of God's power at work in the world. But lastly, you see, Pentecost, you and I, in the story of Pentecost, we too have a dramatic place in this story. We don't have to be a, a certain kind of person for God to use us in a dramatic way. In fact, many of us have much more advantages than did Peter and the Apostles. Most of us are educated and, and relatively affluent. We're people with an amazing abundance of talents and opportunities placed before us. The problem is, is that we haven't emptied ourselves. We haven't open, opened ourselves to the vehicle, to be vehicles of God's grace. We have so much potential, yet so often we find ourselves settling for so little. 
but it's not too late. That's the good news of this Pentecost story. The fire of God is available to us if we'll open ourselves up to it. A number of years ago, Norman Cousins wrote an editorial in the Saturday Review in which he reported a conversation he had on a trip to India with a Hindu priest named Satis. Satis said he, he wanted to come to our country to work as a missionary among the Americans. Cousins assumed that he, he meant that he wanted to convert Americans to the Hindu religion. But when asked, Satis said, Oh no, I would like to convert them to Christian. Christianity can't survive in the abstract. It needs not membership. It needs believers. The people of your country may claim they believe in Christianity, but from what I read at this distance, Christianity is more than, a, more than just a custom than anything else in the American society. I would ask that you either accept the teachings of Jesus in your everyday life and in your affairs as a nation and stop invoking his name as a sanction for everything you do. I want to help save Christianity from the Christians. Sontas had had the power of the apostles at that first Pentecost. He had had the power of the Holy Spirit working in him. The wind of God blowing in this world. People of every nation, every language, every race coming to Christ in unprecedented numbers. But Christ still needs ambassadors in this world today. They may be male, they may be female, they may be black, they may be white, they may be brown, they may be yellow, they may be rich, they may be poor, they may be Gen Xers, yuppies, members of AARP, they may be college educated. It makes no difference. God can use anyone who takes the name of Jesus seriously. Amazing things happened on that first day of Pentecost. A group of Galileans started a revolution that's still going this day. It was the birthday of the church, my friends. A revolution of respect for all people. A recognition that God is still at work in our midst. Won't you join this Jesus revolution today? The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Holy Spirit go with you and abide in you today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen.